Hello everyone, hope you're well. I'm back to CPU testing and today we are looking at Intel's second generation of mainstream core desktop processors, better known as Sandy Bridge. Intel introduced a couple of important changes with this generation, such as the integrated GPU, Intel QuickSync or AVX support. Intel was also quite confident with how simple it is to overclock this generation and suggested that even your grandma can do it. For real. This architecture is very close to my heart since my first proper gaming PC build featured a top-of-the-line offering, the 2700K. Released in late 2011 for 329 USD, 2700K was manufactured on a 32 nanometer process and featured four hyperthreaded cores which were clocked at 3.5 GHz with a maximum turbo clock of 3.9 GHz. Processor operates a 95W TDP and officially supports dual channel DDR3 memory speeds of up to 1333 MHz. To get the most out of this 2700K, I've decided to pair it up with a Maximus 4 Extreme motherboard. And overclock we did. Within minutes, the CPU was running at 5 GHz and I was even allowed to use fast Kingston HyperX Beast DDR3 memory running at 2133. Heck yeah! I can't quite make up my mind whether I like this Maximus more or is it the crosshair from the FX8350 video? What's your take on this? As always, looking after temps is Corsair's H150i Pro all-in-one liquid cooler. Powering the whole thing is AX860i power supply and I'm using the RTX 3080 as a GPU bottleneck. Let's talk about power. Running stock speeds, I measured total system idle power consumption at just 120 watts. Under load, this then spiked to 170 watts. With 5 GHz overclock, total system idle power consumption was at 155 watts, jumping to 265 watts under load. Testing kicks off with Cinebench R23. And with 676 points in single-threaded run, the stock 2700K shows other CPUs who's the boss. Take the FX8350 running at 4.8 GHz and it's still 8% slower. Compared to the stock first-gen i7-870, 2700K is 26% faster, a very impressive generational improvement indeed. When overclocked to 5 GHz, 2700K score jumped to an insane 956 points. At first I said, hang on, that's not possible, and reran the test only to see a huge 41% improvement over the stock. Looking at my old Ryzen 9 3900X with under 1300 points, I almost feel defeated. What the hell? I'm sure looking forward to testing Ivy Bridge soon. In 7-Zips benchmark, stock 2700K delivered 33% higher scores when compared to first-gen i7-870. At 5 GHz, 2700K matched the stock performance of Intel's extreme offering, the 990X. Blender's BMW car demo took 12 minutes and 38 seconds to complete at stock speed, which was more than 4 minute reduction when compared to stock first-gen i7-870, and under 2 minutes faster against the stock AMD's FX8350. When overclocked, render was 31% faster to complete and even slightly faster over the stock i9990X, which has two extra cores. Next, I'm using Handbrake to encode a 10GB 4K video file down to fast 1080p 30 preset. 2700K leaves first gen 870 in dust, cutting down time by nearly 20 minutes. Looking at the FX8350, it is slower, but not by much. 5 GHz overclock reduced the encode time by 27% and it's dangerously close to an overclocked 990X. That concludes synthetic benchmarks and being honest, I'm really impressed with the overclock results. What are your thoughts on the 2700K's performance so far? Let's see what Sandy Bridge does with games next. As always, we start with F1 2018 using ultra-high settings at Japan Circuit. Even at stock speed, 2700K managed 145 FPS on average, with 1% lows at 102, clearly beating all of the first-gen i7s. At 5GHz, 3080 usage spiked up by 10%, 
an average FPS jumped to 170, that's a healthy 17% increase. Looking at the overclocked FX8350 which was 61% slower, I mean, I'm not to side with Intel, but that is a massive difference. CPUs it seemed somewhat low in Dirt Rally, but despite this, stock 2700K pushed 117 FPS on average. Overclocking brought dramatic improvements and with 175 FPS on average, this result looks almost unreal. How is this nearly 12 years old CPU within the reach of the 10900X? That's the magic of Sandy Ridge. Third game tested, Deus Ex Mankind saw a great CPU usage in the mid 80s and 3080 didn't dip below 60%, which is a good sign. Stock 2700K pushed 109 FPS on average, with 1% lows at 78, beating overclocked 8350 by 30%. Once again, with 5GHz overclock, the beastly 2700K matches up to 10900X. Now that's seriously impressive. 2700K continues its great showcase in Forza Horizon 4. Stock runs so 118 FPS on average, with 1% lows at 88, leaving the overclocked AMD 8350 behind by 15%. Overclocking the i7 provided additional 15% of performance. I just love how Shadow of the Tomb Raider harnessed 2700K CPU cores up to mid-90s. When compared to stock first gen, second generation offers nearly 39% more performance. AMD's FX8350 stands no chance and in this test it falls short by 46%. Rainbow Six Siege next and here, stock 2700K delivered 207 FPS on average, matching the Big Daddy 990X but for worse 1% lows. 5GHz overclocked pushed the average FPS by 17% to 243 which made it 50% faster over the 8350. Ouch. Far Cry 6 benchmark so stock 2700K pushed 63 FPS on average, which was enough to beat the crowd, but the margins were smaller. Overclocking provided 23% performance uplift and 33% lead over the poor 8350. Coming up to last game benchmark, Cyberpunk 2077. Only beaten by overclocked Big Daddy 990X, Stock 2700K delivered 78 FPS on average and 1% lows at 45. At 5 GHz, average FPS improved by 15%, once again leaving the AMD's 8350 trailing behind by 34%. Let's wrap up this video. Quite the show this was, wasn't it? What Intel has done with Sandy Bridge was nothing short of excellent. All of the unlocked processors were easy to overclock, offered exceptional performance uplift from the first generation and most importantly, they remained viable for many years to come. When I purchased mine in January 2012, I paid £219 or about USD for it. It then took me nearly 8 years before I finally replaced it with Ryzen 9 3900X and yes, I do agree, I might have kept it for too long but, on the other hand, there was really no need to upgrade and looking at the results of today's testing, I hope you can see that too. Back then, CPU overclocking was fun and provided a significant performance increase and Intel even soldered the IHS with Sandy Bridge which kept them running cooler. Team Blue had the upper hand in this era, but with little to no competition from AMD, progress stagnated for many upcoming generations. I hope you enjoyed this video and I personally loved coming back to this processor. I'm going to revisit AMD's bulldozer architecture soon, wish me luck and I hope to see you all in the next one.